So I wanted to uh, share a little bit about who I am, and I do a lot through pictures. So I don't use a lot of words. Uh, there's usually a lot of slides with a lot of words, so I'm going to use a lot of pictures. They describe some things about me, and then a little bit about a customer experience and a little storytelling. So first of all, I've, I've uh, been in the business of technology and customer experience for a little over 25 years and started my journey um, in entrepreneurship. So back in the late 90s, I started a software company called Kenosha, and we did data analytics uh, back before there was the big data and everybody else got excited about that. We were actually doing data analytics for Walmart and analyzing disparate data sources and normalizing those for Procter & Gamble and Heineken. And uh, we sold that business back in 2008. And um, from there, I started off uh, two other software companies. One is Rewardable, uh, which is still out there today, uh, auditing consumers uh, for uh, retailers and manufacturers. And another software company, OT Solved, which was an overtime management software technology that ultimately I sold last year to a venture company. Um, and most recently, I was talking to Stu, who's a, who's a beekeeper as well, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, I started a retail uh, concept with low and uh, zero waste. So the idea of going into retail and actually having less packaging. So entrepreneurial spirit for sure. Uh, passionate about customer experience, and that was, that's what we're going to talk about tonight. I am an avid camper, my son's in Boy Scout, so I am in a tent once a month, 12 months a year, awesome. Um, so it's great, especially in New England with the cold weather. And I am a beekeeper, and maybe different than Stu, who's also a beekeeper, I'm a beekeeper because I was afraid of bees, terrified. And I said, I want to get over this fear of bees. So what better way to do that than put 30,000 of them in your backyard? <laughs> and uh, it all worked out most of the time pretty well. I've, I have one terrifying story there with my wife um, that uh, she's not going to forgive me for. But besides that, it's been a good experience. And um, most recently, this past February, I was at, uh, did a TED Talk on a portion of what we're going to talk about tonight, so a small portion of that. So that's a little bit about me. Most importantly, I've got an amazing son, uh, an incredible wife, Cynthia, and our daughter, Sabrina. And um, that is kind of the centerpiece of right, why we're all here is for family and friends and, every, and our loved ones. Okay, so um, when we think about customer experience, uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. There's lots of words that come up when we think about smarter devices, smarter experiences. Maybe some of you have heard these before. Connecting people with their passions. Connect with customers on any channel. Turn guests into customers for life. Smarter customer engagement and connected experiences as well as create shoppable experiences anywhere. So do any of those sound familiar? I hope so, because I went to every one of the vendor sites and found key terms around experiences and customer experience on those sites. So you've got an incredible group of vendors uh, for the retail side. You've got an incredible group of vendors that are very passionate about customer experience. So I would encourage you. How many of you have, this is your first time to an NG retail or some, a GDS? Oh, okay, phenomenal, okay. So let me give you a word of advice with regards to time. You've got 48 hours. Your company and your family have invested in you to be down here. Take every bit of this opportunity and take advantage of it to meet as many peers, okay, as well as the vendors, because you may need that vendor today or you may need them tomorrow. But to have this interaction one-on-one, face-to-face, -on -one, -face, especially with the speed dating tomorrow, and you'll learn more about that tomorrow, this is an opportunity. So if I had to give you a piece of advice with regards to this event, take advantage of the time that you've been given to come here and be part of this event. Okay, so let's talk about customer experience. How many of you have had an exceptional customer experience? Something over the top, right? Maybe a restaurant, a local restaurant, um, a great hotel that you stayed in. Okay, your favorite coffee shop, an experience that was so exceptional that it turns you from an everyday, a casual shopper into an everyday brand loyal ambassador, right? It was so good, in fact, maybe you even took a selfie and posted it on social media. Now, I know probably nobody in this room ever takes a selfie. No, right? Well, I do. So I was shopping at Mitchell's and I had a great experience. I took a picture and I posted it. Okay, so Mitchell's is a clothing store in Westport, Connecticut, and uh, incredible experiences. And, and this store here is just one simple example, Mitchell's. He was doing customer experience back in the 80s, okay? I know it's hard to believe. Back in the 80s with an IBM server that took up a room with air conditioners and coolers, and a printer was installed by his bed. 
And every morning he would wake up and on the printer, okay, in dot matrix, uh, you know, the dot matrix printers, would be the list of all the customers that spent X dollars in his store the day before. And he would write a personal note to every single one of them before he left his bedroom. Okay, that's customer experience. Okay, and he's a clothing store, not surviving, but thriving. Okay, so just an example of customer experience. Okay, so um, when we think about, again, the customer experience, I, you know, why is it so important? At the end of the day, um, people say, well, geez, customer experience costs money. Training costs money, okay? When we think about those customer experience that you just raised your hand uh, for, okay, all those great experiences that you had, okay, think about it. Why is it that if you had that great customer experience, why is it that roughly one million businesses go out of business every year? Is it because of Walmart's low pricing? Maybe. Maybe it's Amazon's free shipping, right? Ship, free shipping program. That, that could put some companies out of business, right? Is it just that they weren't aggressive enough at marketing? Possibly. Or are all those just excuses? And the real answer lies in figuring out how to deliver a customer experience, whether it be on the phone, on the internet, okay, or, or digital, or in person. Okay? And I have been fascinated by this throughout my entire career, why some companies succeed and others fail. And throughout my career, I've been fortunate enough to travel the world and visit literally thousands of companies in a sales role and meet hundreds of executives. And the ones that stand out, the ones that truly succeed, are the ones that tell me stories about how they have exceptional customer experience, how customer is first on anything they talk about, whether it be the technology, whether it be how they hire, et cetera. And the numbers are, are stand behind it as well, because um, this is Forrester Research did a study on it. Customer experience leaders, so businesses that are truly excelling at customer experience, outperform the laggers significantly. So 17% growth from over five year period compared to 3%. So it's not just, hey, it's good business because let's be nice to customers. It's actually a bottom line driver. And so when you go back to those businesses, your companies, that's something to think about with regards to as you make all these decisions is how is this truly impacting my customer? Because I want to be one of the leaders, not a lagger. So here's what's great about this is I'm going to really just start, uh, sit back, enjoy your glass of wine. I've got mine waiting for me. I promised I'd have one when I got done. So I have one waiting. Sit back and relax. I'm going to tell a couple stories about customer experience. And through these stories, hopefully, you'll go home with an idea or two that you might think about implementing or something replicating, or just something inspiring with regards to how you might want to work with your business and your company in the future. So that's a lot of corks, right? It's a lot of corks, right? So I'm going to tell you a little story about Edible Arrangements, a company I worked for for three and a half years, and a story about this guy named Mattress Mac. So Mattress Mac was a furniture, uh, uh, furniture store down in Texas. How many people live in Texas or know Mattress Mac? Oh, Gallery Furniture. Okay, so we've got a couple Gallery Furniture members here. So Mattress Mac owns literally, he's got now two stores, but back when, when we sold him first and met him, he had one big store. And he is just, he loves his customers, loves his customers. So um, he had done a donation, he had done a donation to a charity, and in return, somebody sent him an edible arrangement. And he is a health nut on top of everything else. He's a health, health nut. So he called up our local edible arrangement, and he said, hi, this is Mattress Mac. And I want to buy arrangements for all my customers. And they said, well, that's awesome. He goes, but I want a good discount because I'm going to buy a lot of arrangements. So what would be a lot of arrangements? Every week, if I were going to say, how many arrangements, what would be a lot for you? What would you think? Like, th yeah, OK, so you might know. So what would, what would be a lot? What would you think would be a lot for a business like Edible Arrangements? You know, what would be a lot of arrangements every week to deliver? 500. Five, oh my god, 500. That's out of control. I mean, the store only does a couple hundred a month. But OK, OK, 500. How many would be a lot to you? 5,000, oh my God, this is an ambitious group. Okay, this is, this is interesting numbers, okay. So the, the, they said, well, we can give you a 20% discount. And he said, well, wait a minute, I can get 20% online. So he hung up. Thank God there's two stores in uh, Houston. So he calls up the second, in Austin, he calls up the second store, he says, hey, this is Mattress Mac. I love your arrangements. I wanna buy a lot of arrangements every week. And the woman said, oh my God, we can totally help you with that. He goes, but I want a great discount. And they said, we can give you 20%. He goes, I need better than that. They go, we can't do anything more. Hung up. Guess what? There is a third and final store in town. Thank God. And he calls him up. He says, I want to buy a lot of arrangements. And the, the person on the other end said, can I have my owner call you back? So an empowered employee to say, can I have somebody call you back to learn about um, what you want? So the uh, owner called him back and said, uh, well, how can I help you? He goes, I want to buy a lot of arrangements. She said, can I come down and meet with you? 
And guess what the first question she asked was? What's a lot? What's a lot? I mean, 500, 5,000, these guys are through the stratosphere. If they were selling that many, I'd, I'd own a couple of edible arrangements myself. Um, but anyway, they went down and actually it was 350 arrangements a week, which turned out to be a million dollars a year from one customer, from one customer, a million dollar account. Okay, so when you think about a $65 arrangement of edible arrangements and one person doing a million dollars a year, okay? Now she offered him 20% and he said, I need a better deal. So you know what she did? She said, how about this? You love our pineapple, don't you? He goes, I love your pineapple. She says, I'll bring 100 pineapple pops down to your store every week for your staff. He goes, sold, I'll do it. So knowing kind of empowering your teams to understand or the owners knowing that let's, let's understand it doesn't really have to be a price, but negotiations sometimes of somebody feeling good about knowing they've gotten something special because they're doing something special. What an incredible opportunity. So a lot is, in this case, was 350 arrangements a week, a million dollars a year, changed this franchisee's life, okay, and her store forever. Okay, who's been to New York? Okay, right? How about New York, New York in Las Vegas? All right, okay, we've all been there, we've all been there. So um, I took a red eye in, and it wasn't a great flight. It's the whole thing running to LaGuardia, almost missing the flight, then the flight being delayed, and then getting in super late. So it wasn't like a spectacular experience so far today, uh, for the day. And it was maybe at that point 12.30 uh, at night. So I get to New York, New York, and the woman says, oh, my God, welcome to New York. Now, I still have a little bit of sense of humor, but I'm, I'm you know, semi-edgy. So I said, you're welcoming to New York. I just left New York. I don't even know where the hell I am. So she says, sir, hold on one second. She ran back, she came out, she goes, sir, since you were in New York and now you're back in New York and you have no idea where you are, she goes, we're upgrading you to our largest suite. <laughs> now listen, that suite was, or, look, it's 1230 at night. I'm literally checking out the next morning, eight o'clock. How much is it gonna cost them? Nothing. Nothing, right? But experiential for John Bacuzzi who literally doesn't gamble. I did, I put a quarter in because I felt guilty. So I did go, I went down and, <laughs> Put a quarter in, made my donation, and then walked right up to this amazing 1,300 square feet. I had a doorbell. I don't know why, but I did. <laughs> I had a couch that literally half this room could have sat on, and we could have watched a football game. I had my own card room, okay? Not sure what you do, but I guess you play cards in that room. But I had all of this, and so for a few hours, from 1230 to 6, I got to sit in that amazing room. So the idea of this customer experience sometimes, again, is the idea of understanding where a consumer is sitting, and sitting in their shoes and understanding how can I amplify or get, how can I turn this person into something spectacular? How can I deliver a great experience out of that? So I just loved how this woman ha had the foresight to play along with where I was in my attitude at that point and, uh, and get me that room. Okay, so um, this goes back to Edible Arrangements. Another great story here. I was out at a regional conference and um, I, this gentleman walks up to me and he says, hey, I'm Bob, I'm one of the delivery ambassadors. So our delivery ambassadors were the people that would hand deliver the arrangements and deliver them in the truck. And uh, he goes, oh, I wanna share a story. You know, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the dancing and um, I'm the rhyming delivery ambassador. I said, oh, I said, what's your name? He says, Bob. I said, oh, Bob, that's awesome. He says, yeah, sometimes even if it's a birthday, I'll wear a birthday hat. So this guy was really into it. He loved, loved, loved his job. And he goes, well, this one time I went up to this woman's house and she opened the door and it was an elderly woman and I did my little song, happy birthday. And then I said, now I got a split and I did a split. And she laughed and laughed. I said, oh my God, that's incredible. So he walks away, Bob walks away. The owner of that store happened to overhear this conversation. And she says, well, he's actually not telling you the whole story. Um, that woman, later on that day, the, the woman's daughter called up the store and I spoke to her as the owner. And she said, I want to let you know the delivery ambassador changed my mom's life today. She buried her son two weeks ago. And she's been crying for the last two weeks she hasn't eaten. That arrangement was the first thing she had consumed in two weeks. And it was the first time she had laughed. So Bob was far more than a delivery ambassador and some guy getting paid nine bucks an hour to drive around in a truck that's refrigerated. He actually was changing people's lives. So as you think about your employees and your staff, okay, how are we impacting and changing people's lives? Is it a great pair of shoes for somebody? Is it something special, that special moment? Is it a bar mitzvah or is it some kind of graduation? How are we changing and impacting people's lives? We need to be start thinking about that and training our staff to start feeling that way because if we don't, then they have lots of options. They have lots of options. Amazon. So um, 
Amazon is just like this crazy company, right? It's like, I don't even know if they make money or not, but they, they do so many different things. So I've got my Kindle, and um, I'm like having a little technical issue, and it says, well, you know, technical support. And I'm like, oh, God, here we go. Because right, like, as soon as you say technical support, it's like you know you're about what you're about to get engaged with, right? It's a whole like four hours on the phone, or hey, I'm gonna pretend to chat with you and pretend I care, and all these other things. So I say, well, okay, support. And they say, well, do you want us to call you now or in five minutes? I'm like, call me now. And I, boop, ring, the f my cell phone rang. I said, oh, I said, hello? I said, hi, this is Amazon, how can we help you? I mean, it was absolutely incredible. So when we're thinking about those experiences, about our businesses, and you're usually integrating technology, think about truly like what would be a game changer? Because my perception, and I probably most people in this room, the perception of customer experiences is relatively low. The expectation, the bar is pretty low, right? I mean, just getting a live person is mind blowing. So just think about these guys taking it to the next step. They say, what if? What if we asked them to call, if we could call them back? And other companies now have started to replicate this, and I, I find it very impressive. So just thinking about changing that perspective um, of the customer could be a major game changer for your business. Okay, another, another little edible story here that I think is uh, very touching, but, but important again, thinking about some of the rules and regulations that our businesses have and the guidelines that we follow, which are all awesome and important, but understanding where the customer truly does come first and that experience comes first. So um, unfortunately, this, this young boy is terminally ill, and he's in the hospital with his family. And um, you know, it, it, at this point, it's inevitable. So it is a sad story, and he is going to pass at some point. And he wakes up that morning um, in, and out of, in and out of consciousness, and he says, Mom, it's my birthday. So the mom says, oh my god, yes, it's your birthday. And she starts making phone calls, and she calls up Edible Arrangements. Now, it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon, so our delivery policy is we can't now deliver because it's past three o'clock. So she says, listen, it's my son, he's in the hospital, he's you know, terminally ill, can you help us out? This is, he says it's his birthday and we want him to have a special day. Of course, edible arrangement person, absolutely, we're gonna be right over there. So they made this giant arrangement for him with the birthday and the balloons and the happy birthday and they got it over to him. And they got the pineapple pop and they gave it to the little boy and the little boy, you know, again, he's, on, he's, in, he's in the bed and everything else and they gave it to him and he is sucking on this piece of pineapple. He passed away four or five hours later. But he had that birthday. And Edible Arrangements broke all the rules with regards to our delivery policies and how fast we can make an arrangement and all the other things because for that mom, she needed something and we delivered. My guess is she's probably still a loyal customer to this point and not because we were focused on her being a loyal customer, we were focused on that little boy. So as you think about your customers, sometimes not all of it, and I know we're in a technology conference and we need technology desperately, but we also need that human personal touch because I would, I would struggle to find a technology that would have been smart enough to figure that component out. Maybe in 10 years or maybe with that weird Mercedes woman. Um, <laughs> but, but right now, but right now, right? That's, isn't that weird? Wasn't working right. Uh, uh, but right now, that's a, that's a human touch, and we need to have that. We need to have that human touch. All right, who's got a pet here? Anybody got a pet? Oh, my God, you love your pets, right? Yep. Who's got dogs? Because those are actually the, those are the craziest people. Yeah, all right, so good, you got dogs. All right, so you love those animals, right? You love those dogs. So uh, dogs and cats. So um, I'm at a friend's house. This is a picture from a friend's house, and uh, she's got these three portraits of her animals. I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool, but, you know, geez, you're making portraits of your animals. So um, I'm like, wow, you got those porches. Those are nice of your animals. And they look like her dogs and, and the cat. So she goes, yeah. She goes, Chewy.com painted these for me. I'm like, who? She goes, I get my food through Chewy.com. And they went and all of a sudden in the mail came two portraits of my two dogs in the mail as a thank you for being a customer. Surprise and delight. So then she contacted him and said, listen, I, this is amazing. You gave me these two amazing portraits. I love them, but I have a cat. Would you guys make a portrait of the cat? And they did. They did. So they actually have um, artists on staff at Chewy.com that all day, all they do is do portraits of animals and send them out as a surprise. OK? So I think that's, and, and has anybody had an animal pass with Chewy.com? Anybody use Chewy.com? OK. So have you had an animal pass? Okay, so if an animal passes and you have an order that comes in, that, yeah, die, yeah, yeah, die. I, I want to be nice about it. 
yeah, no, no, die, like just dead. Like stop breathing, like that's it, just done. Yeah, de dead, like you know, very expensive. Um, so, so when your dog passes or the, uh, the cat dies, you call them up and like, oh my God, my dog died. And they're like, um, oh, well, you know, your delivery's coming. Here's what we're gonna do, we're gonna refund you that full delivery, but we want you to donate the, uh, the, the dog food to a local charity. Isn't that incredible? Like what a great, like they're just, they just are so into it. And then they do a sympathy. Um, they send flowers. They send flowers to their customer for in sympathy of the dog. So like if you think about authenticity, and we were talking about that today in the breakout with Amanda, if you think about authenticity, they're authentic. Like the animal comes first. They are so into that animal. They are, they're, they're doing portraits. They have uh, people on staff, right? So like what are you doing from a retail perspective that you could think about that would be a little bit outside the box, but inside of who you are as a personality, as a brand? And that's what these guys are doing. They're saying, yeah, guess what we're going to do? We're going to refund the money, and we're going to have them donate the food. We're going to make portraits. We're going to send sympathy flowers. Okay, Huge effort forward, but guess what? Those customers, my guess is customer for life. Right? My guess is the last time they ever buy food is going to be from Chewy.com, right? Okay, so this is one of my favorite stories, and this is my, this is, uh, my last story. So Ruth, I want to tell you a story about Ruth. So Ruth and I... I worked in New York City a little over 20 years ago, and um, I need a pair of glasses because I can't see. So uh, I'm a pretty practical guy. Like, I'm not buying glasses because, like, you know, I want to look, like, really cool or anything else. I just wanted a pair of glasses so I could see. That was really critical for me, uh, driving and all the other stuff. So um, I went down the elevator, and I took a left-hand turn, and I found Ruth's store. So I didn't find Ruth's store because of a giant sign that said 20% off. Okay? I didn't find it because of a giant ad uh, that she had posted, and I certainly didn't find it in the internet um, or through an SEO uh, search, right, because all that wasn't in existence 21 years ago. Okay? I found her store for one simple reason, and that was convenience. Okay? But what's kept me coming back for 21 years is how she treated me on that first visit and every visit since. So I went into the store, and I immediately was greeted by one of her uh, assistants, and she said, hi, you know, welcome to 1010 Optics. How can I help you? And I'm like, well, I'm here for a pair of glasses, obviously, right? Because this is a glass store. I can't see. Boom. So um, she says, oh, well, let me get Ruth for you. So Ruth comes over. She says, oh, my God, welcome to 1010 Optics. Um, you know, what kind of style are you looking for? What kind of look? And I was like, well, um, frames, like anything. Like, how about maybe, like, and I got nervous because I didn't know, like, like, a look. I was like, how about Michael J. Fox, like wire frames? And she goes, oh, she goes, let me, I'll take it from here. So she persisted then at that point to put down um, multiple glasses and put them on my face. And she had this special camera back then that would take a picture of you and then you could see like what you look like, which I thought was amazing because how many people have gone to the, the eye doctor 15 years ago where you went to the eye doctor and said, well, how do you like those frames? I don't know. I can't see myself in those frames because there's no lens in there. But this woman was smart enough to have the camera, so she'd take the picture and she'd put it up. So back then, that was big technology, okay? Um, you, know, not, you know, not Amazon Web Server, but it was, it was big technology. So anyway, um, she put out three pairs of glasses. She said, John, she goes, look, these are the three choices for you today. She goes, the conservative choice, this is probably the one that you're going to want to go with. And she was right. I was like, yep, how much? The second one's a little more uh, daring. And the third one is, the, is the really bold, and it's the right one. And it's the one I'm going to sell you today. I said, Ruth, whoa. And these glasses at that point had this like multiple colors in the plastic. It was like really out of control. So I said, Ruth, I said, um, I, I don't know if I can go with that third pair. She goes, John, listen, you came in. This is the pair you're going to go home with. So I bought the pair. I mean, I don't know. She convinced me to buy the pair. So I, I came back two weeks later. I picked them up. And I was totally freaked out because they were so loud. So I walk out of the store and I take a right-hand turn. And a woman stops me like literally 15 feet from the store. She goes, oh, my God, I love your glasses. So I'm like, Ruth is good. <laughs> that is one smart marketer. So I'm like taking notes. So um, it wasn't until the fifth compliment on my commute home that day that I realized that Ruth was a genius. OK? And she had really actually changed my life. OK? So that it was incredible. And ever since then, if you think about it, right, 21 years later, I've got hundreds of optic centers. Now, I no longer work in New York City. So I literally have to take a personal vacation day to go to Ruth to spend a ridiculous amount on glasses, okay, all for the experience. Isn't that incredible? It's not about price for me. I never ask her the price. Why would I waste time with price when she changes people's lives with a pair of glasses, 
right? So, so what are we doing as brands? It's not the 20% off. What are we doing as brands to change people's lives? That's the difference, okay? And it's incredible. I mean, she's just, she's just a little rock star. So we're still friends today. I was just there a year and a half ago. She got me these glasses, which again, blue. I was like, whoa, this is, she goes, nope, you're, gonna, you're walking out with these. I haven't picked out a pair of glasses in 20 years. It's amazing, 21 years. So they may forget what you said, but they will never forget how you made them feel. And I just love this quote because if you think about it, Ruth made me feel important, special, okay? She made me feel like I was her only customer. Those are all the things. She made me feel so great. And that's why I was ultimately seduced by exceptional customer service. So with that, thank you very much. If you've got any questions, happy to take them. <clears throat> Thank you, John. Thank you, John. If you have questions, let me come to you with the mic so everybody can hear. Um, John, I know you're consulting now. I have a question for you. We're hearing more about the customer experience officer being yep. hired. Uh, how much, how mu are you hearing about that a lot? Is this the new thing? Is this where everybody should be going? Customer experience I think officer. these, uh, you know, this is like it falls, whether it falls into HR. I think it frankly falls inside of sales and marketing. Um, that's where we really should report into because they always should have a check mark on everything that marketing and sales is doing. Um, as I'm talking to businesses and working with them, I mean, that's the area we make sure, we were just talking again in the breakout with regards to omni-channel and multiple places people shop. But many years ago, and maybe some of you still have this today, is digital reported into a different group than uh, your retail brick and mortar. Well, that makes no sense because now you're competing against yourself. And it's no different than the, the officer for customer experience. Is that CX officer? needs to be right embedded into the, inside of sales and marketing to put a check on um, how approaches are going to be taken, whether it is a technology approach, a difference in how you're going to run a call center. I mean, my, our call center, I would, I would uh, fluctuate between having 100 people to having over 600 people during Mother's Day and Valentine's Day in my, in my uh, customer care center. And there was a lot that went into understanding all the components and the expenses around that. Um, but you, what you have to realize is what's the cost of losing a customer because of a bad experience. So I think that's going to actually evolve very quickly. Um, but it, if, as you think about it and you go back to your organizations, I would absolutely think about putting it into sales and marketing, not underneath HR. Good question. Question for John. we got a minute before dinner prep goes over. Go ahead, Richard. My beekeeper friend. Hey, John. Uh, is on? Hey, John. How you doing? Um, first of all, I've known you for a lot of years. Uh, you're a very authentic guy, and you did a great job today. Well done. Um, could you spend just a minute and just let people know what you're embarking on sure. uh, in the next 30 days, really? Yeah, so again, I, I, um, I really, I, I, I try to live what I preach with regards to passion. So one of the things that Sue and I were talking about is I'm, I'm opening up a retail concept uh, for low and zero waste. And so the whole concept is, as we think about this ever-changing world, I'm very conscious of, you know, we both have bees because, you know, it's important that, if, guess what, if we don't have bees, 70% of the fresh produce goes away. It's a problem. Like, who likes almonds? Those go away. Like, no more almonds if we don't have bees. So, um, so this idea came about to, to open up a retail business called BD Provisions, and you can look it up on Facebook and, and Instagram now. It's going live November 30th, and it is a retail concept that we, you'll be able to go in and buy bulk. So the idea is you come in, you want to buy four ounces of almonds or five ounces of grain or 10 pounds of flour. You buy what you want, but it's in a compostable bag or in a glass jar that's returnable. So you bring the jar back, and we replace the jar and give you a new jar. And so the whole idea is get rid of, uh, get, uh, getting rid of packaging uh, and the cost of all the stuff, the plastics that are going into our landfills, and really focusing on being authentic with regards to, hey, have great food, but can we get rid of the waste without changing your life too much? So it's like, a, it's like a gateway, I say. It's like a gateway to zero waste. Anybody that tells you zero waste, by the way, most of them are lying, unless they're pulling up on a bicycle that they built from scratch out of recycled material, and they're wearing hemp clothing that they grew. Okay? Um, they're, they're really, truly. So, so our idea is maybe zero waste is 100 years away. Maybe it's 500 years away. But how do we start today with a little step? So even like our coffee, we're roasting it in-house and we're buying it from farms that are fair trade so those people can earn livings um, and, they can, um, and they can, you know, it's organic. And then we have it in a compostable bag. 
And then we're not even using a label, we're using a stamp on the bag. So again, you can take that bag and drop it right into a compost and 45 days later, that's gonna be part of your environment. So thanks for asking about it. I'm super passionate about it. I wasn't gonna bring it up, but I love this idea. I, I think we're gonna deliver this customer experience. We're paying our people um, aggressively because we feel, again, it's part of the community. Like people need to earn a living so they can shop. So we feel like a fair, a fair wage is also really important. So it launches November 30th. Thank you.